Oh my god, this is the craziest thing I have ever seen in a game. The wait is over. College football 25 is finally here. And I can tell you, man, this game has met and surpassed any expectations that I had of this game. And to be fair, this is probably my favorite sports game that I've played since like NBA 2K11. This game is incredibly smooth. The atmospheres, in my opinion, are perfect. It's literally the most true and authentic college football experience we have ever had. Before we jump in and really start hitting it hard, I wanted to simulate the opening season of College Football 25 to see who wins in the first 12-team college football playoff. We've got Georgia sitting at the top of the rankings here, followed by Ohio State, Texas, Oregon, Ole Miss, Alabama, Penn State, Notre Dame, Michigan, and Missouri. To be honest, none of these rankings are a surprise to me heading into the season, but let's see how it plays out. Let's see how things shift around. Here are the five players on the Heisman watch. We've got Ollie Gordon the second, Shador Sanders, Quinshawn Judkins, Travis Hunter, and Carson Beck. Our first game of the season, Florida State squeaks out one against Georgia Tech, but in the next week, they would actually lose to Boston College by two points. Uh, we have a huge game, LSU against USC. USC squeaks it out 34 to 19. Don't know if I buy that one, but we'll see. Um, but pretty much after that, everybody who was supposed to win won. Georgia has a huge game against Clemson, and they win 34 to 28. Here we are, six weeks into the season, and Michigan is at the top. I'm in here of the top 25. You got Ohio State at two, followed by Oregon, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas State, NC State, Miami, Notre Dame, Missouri, Utah, and then Georgia rounding us out at that top 12. And then you've got USC right under them. Georgia's already lost two games. They lost to Auburn in the previous week. And as we kind of scroll down here, you've got Louisville, Auburn coming out five and one after having a pretty rough couple years. Then you've got Alabama with their first year head coach at four and one, followed by Kansas, Texas A&M, LSU is three and two as well. Nebraska, somebody who has had a very rough go for the last five or six years is five and one six weeks through the season florida state four and two ucf four and one and ole miss rounding out the top 25 at four and two here is our heisman watch six weeks into the season and there has been a lot of movement here we've got koi eakin christian leary will shepherd billy edwards and will howard who we had starting is definitely not on this list now. And it's kind of weird to me that you don't have Travis Hunter or Shador. You've got Will Shepard on the Heisman watch list. Let's kind of see how this plays out in six more weeks. 12 weeks into the season, we have got the college football playoff rankings. Michigan still sitting in that top spot, defending national champions. Ohio State at number two, followed by USC, Oregon, Virginia Tech, Auburn, NC State, Notre Dame, Miami, Alabama, Kansas, and Texas. You've got Dylan Gabriel sitting at the top at Oregon, Cameron Rising with Utah, CJ Ogbana, I probably said that wrong, with Buffalo, Buffalo. Then Billy Edwards Jr. with Maryland sitting there, and then Christian Leary of Georgia Tech kind of rounding us out at that top five Heisman hopefuls going into week 13. Here is our conference championship schedule. We've got Liberty, an outside chance to get into the playoff. It's a must win for them against Louisiana Tech. And then you've got a big, big game in the Big 12. You've got Utah versus Kansas. Playoff implications, it is a must win for both of these teams if they want a shot in that first 12 team playoff and then we get into the sec alabama playing florida you've got nc state playing smu and then you've got a rematch oregon versus ohio state oregon actually beat ohio state in the regular season let's see if ohio state can get revenge in this conference championship game and then here are your Heisman finalists going into this conference championship week. You've got Will Howard sitting at the top, followed by Will Shepard, Cameron Rising, CJ Ogbonna, and Billy Edwards Jr. These players were not on the Heisman watch list to start the season. So let's see if Will Howard can have a great game in the conference championship to solidify his chance at winning 
a Heisman. Here are our results for the conference championships. You've got Liberty squeaking out a win against Louisiana Tech, and they have punched their ticket into the college football playoff. And then you've got Tulane. I didn't even think about this, but since they won, they are going to be one of the highest ranked conference champions, and they have also punched their ticket into the college football playoff. Incredible for such a small school like Tulane. And then you've got Alabama getting absolutely routed by Florida, 44 to 14. NC State destroys SMU, 45 to two. And for the second time this season, my Ohio State Buckeyes get beat by Oregon, 28 to 21. Maybe a little fire, Ryan, baby, in this. <sighs> then our Heisman Trophy winner ends up being Cameron Rising from Utah. I believe that is the first Heisman Trophy winner out of Utah. Somebody in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong. You've got Will Howard, Will Shepard, Dorian Singer, and CJ Ogbonna kind of rounding out our final list to close out the season. Here you have it, folks. You've got the first 12-team college football playoff here in college football 25. We've got some shockers in here that I'm not going to lie. I did not expect them to get in. You've got Tulane and Liberty. They were one of the highest ranked conference champions so they got an automatic bid into the playoff i'm really curious to see in real time with the seasons coming up of how this is going to play out and kind of what the response is going to be when you have a school like tulane or liberty who maybe have got uh in over a non-conference opponent who was a better team than these so drop a comment down below what do you think is going to happen when we unroll this 12 team playoff this year now we're going to simulate this and we're going to see who is going to be the first 12 team college football playoff national champion the first round of the playoffs is done usc was able to squeak one out over Miami, Ohio State beats Tulane. Then you had Clemson routing Virginia Tech. Then you had the defending national champions beat Kansas by two scores. And now we have got the four bowl games locked in. We've got the Rose Bowl, USC and Oregon, Liberty and Ohio State at the Sugar Bowl. And at the Peach Bowl, you've got NC State and Clemson, a little kind of in-state rivalry there. And then you have Utah and Michigan with the Fiesta Bowl. Let's see how these pan out and who's going to make it to our semi-final round. Here we are at the Rose Bowl. And before I get into it, can we just take time to really appreciate how good the presentation is here on College Football 25? The team did a fantastic job. It really makes me feel like we have finally hit next gen in sports video games. And I could not be happier with this. The graphics are incredible. But here we are. We've got USC and Oregon. And we're going to see who is going to win former Pac-12 matchup now big 10 who is going to get the win here in pasadena oregon continuing where they left off in the big 10 championship they destroyed usc 37 to 10 this program has really caught fire here at the end of the season and dylan gabriel leads the pack at 309 yards and three touchdowns they are moving on to play the winner of liberty and ohio state in the sugar bowl that bracket definitely said the sugar bowl but here we are in the fiesta bowl this is the first error that i've seen college football 25 make which isn't a big one but it's ohio state against liberty liberty is getting their chance at a college football playoff game and this is kind of the cool thing about having a 12 man tournament is you get these opportunities like this and depending on how the outcomes go in real life it's going to determine how the committee approaches these kinds of things but nonetheless it's a good opportunity and again the presentation of this game is unbelievable but let's see who gets the victory between ohio state and Liberty. This game ended up being back and forth for the first half. And then it appeared as if Ohio State was actually going to take this game away as we got deep into the third quarter. But Liberty decided that they were going to make a charge back to get down by one score going into the fourth, which led to this onside kick. And we're going to see what happens here. And Ohio State scoops it up and they're going to come away 
with the victory winning what was supposed to be the sugar bowl but was the fiesta bowl and they are going to be moving on to the next round playing oregon for the third time this season and will howard is the player of this game 194 and two touchdowns now we are moving on to a little neighboring rivalry here clemson and nc state in the peach bowl Clemson in the last 10 years has had a lot of success in the playoff, winning two national championships, the last one with Trevor Lawrence. And you've got NC State, who is new to the college football playoff. And honestly, I did not expect them, but they played great down the stretch and have earned their way in. But with that being said, I think a lot of people think that Clemson is going to come away with the win here. Clemson would strike first here, but that would be the only time they would have the lead. NC State would go up 20. 28 to 7 at the half and Clemson would kind of make a little late run but it was not enough NC State was walking away with the victory 31 to 21 Grayson McCall great game 244 yards and two touchdowns and NC State the improbable victor is moving on to play the winner of Michigan and Utah Michigan looks a lot different this year. They have a first year head coach and a lot of their foundational pieces from that national championship team have moved on to the NFL, but that did not stop them. They did lose to Ohio State. Thank God that we don't have to listen to that anymore, but they still did well enough to get into the playoff and they are taking on a Utah team that is wanting to prove themselves. They're always a team that is sneaky good and this is their opportunity to cement themselves as a perennial contender for years to come. But unfortunately, the defending national champions would destroy Utah 37 to 3. You hate to see it. I was really pulling for Utah here, but it proves that when you are in this position a lot, you find a way to get the win. Moore walked away with four catches, 140 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. And Michigan is going to be playing NC State in the semi finals we are officially here at the semifinals and the first game we're going to jump into is going to be oregon versus ohio state for the third time this season let's see if third time is the charm for this ohio state team as they take on oregon in the cotton Bowl. this game was very back and forth a lot of lead changes to start oregon would jump up 10 then ohio state would score 14 unanswered then oregon would respond and kind of take a commanding lead but in the fourth quarter ohio state would make one last final push and here we are third and two three and a half minutes left in the fourth let's see if ohio state can get the stop here and they do and it is fourth and one oregon is going to punt this away waiting on the punt oregon punts it away ohio state is waiting for the punt he goes, takes off, and gets about what seems to be six or seven. Abuka did not get a good return there. It is first and 10, Ohio State, 314 left. This could be a legacy-defining drive for Will Howard. Howard drops back. He looks, and he misses his receiver just barely. It is second and 10 with 309 left. Howard in the gun. Waiting on the snap, claps, gets it, drops back, looks, fires across the middle, and he gets the first down. What a great little play there by Smith. Howard hurrying everybody up. 2.58, time is ticking. Howard waiting on the snap, drops back, looks, fires, and the receiver, Smith, gets hammered again, and he does not get it. Second and 10, Ohio State. All right, audibling. Gets the snap, drops back, he's got time to throw. He throws, and number 88 gets the catch there. It is third and four. They got to convert here to keep their hopes alive. Howard drops back, looks, got all day to throw. He's looking, he's looking, and he throws it away on third and four. And they're punting? What? <laughs> Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Oregon is your winner here, and they are gonna be moving on to the national championship. They have beat Ohio State three straight times. I really hope this doesn't happen in real life. Bill and Gabriel walks away with 232 yards and two touchdowns. 
Oregon is going to face the winner of Michigan and NC State. Here we are at the Orange Bowl. It is NC State against the defending national champions, Michigan. And this is going to be a defining game for this first year head coach at Michigan. Can he continue where Harbaugh left off or can NC State with the improbable run and the great play by their quarterback, get the win and move on to have their chance at winning their first national title. NC State would come out swinging and they would continue that way through the entire game, dismantling Michigan 34 to zero. Grayson McCall would have another fantastic game, 212 yards passing, 77.3 completion rate and two touchdowns. NC State is getting their opportunity to continue their Cinderella run where they will take on Oregon and the national championship at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. This game is going to be a special one. Not only is this the first national championship of college football 25, but we are going to witness a school get their first national championship. Is it going to be Oregon? They have been so close over the last 10 to 15 years of winning the big game. And then you've got NC State, somebody who wasn't even on the radar, has played very, very well and made their way into the national championship. Who is going to get the win? This game would go back and forth. It was a battle between NC State and Oregon, and it is gonna bring us to the fourth quarter. We are going to have one of the craziest endings I have ever seen in a game. Oregon waiting to kick this punt off here. We are fourth and four, two minutes and 38 seconds. Punt is up and it is a good one. They are going to pin NC State deep into their own territory. It is first and 10, Grayson McCall in the gun, 232, drops back, fires one quickly, and they are going to get five yards on the play. Quick hurry up here, two minutes, 25 seconds. Calling an audible, waiting on the snap, hands it off, and the running back gets across, gets the first down and more. It is first and 10 with 215 in the shotgun. Waiting on the snap, gets it, drops back. He's got plenty of time and throws it incomplete, almost picked off, 2.07 left, second and 10. He does a little audible, waiting on the snap, gets it, fires, and across the middle, number five, almost gets to midfield, and that is gonna take us to the two minute warning. Grace McCall gets ready to go in the gun, drops back, looks, Fires out to his left, and the ball is dropped. Second and 10. Time is ticking here. They only have two minutes to tie it up. Still plenty of time. McCall drops back, looks, fires, and incomplete again, throwing it into traffic. All right, here we are waiting. Grayson waiting to get the snap. Drops back. He looks. He fires. And he completes it. And more. And number five, stiff arms. Goes to the 20. The 10. Touchdown. Oh, my God. NC State takes the lead going into the late part of the fourth quarter. How will Oregon respond? They have to get into the end zone here. They've got a minute 43 and three timeouts. Plenty of time. Oregon takes it out of the end zone and gets just shy of the 15 yard line. First and 10, Gabriel in the gun. He gets a snap, he drops back, he looks, he fires, and incomplete second and 10, Oregon. Minute 37 left, yet Gabriel in the gun, two running backs back there with him. He drops back, he looks, he fires, and he gets it just to almost the 45-yard line, first and 10, a minute 31 left. Can Gabriel become one of the Oregon greats? Mariota, Bo Nix, Joey Harrington. Drops back, looks, he fires, and incomplete bounces off of the defender there. Second and 10, 127 left. Gabriel in the gun waiting on the snap, gets it, drops back the pass, looks, 
He fires downfield and makes the completion across the 30, to the 20, to the 10, touchdown. Oh my God, Oregon gets a touchdown and reclaims the lead, but gives NC State a lot of time to be able to tie this game up. Oh my God. Can Oregon make the stop here or can Grayson McCall lead NC State down the field for a touchdown to win a national championship? NC State gets to about the 15 yard line, 16 yard line. Grayson McCall in the gun, minute 17 left. Gets the snap, drops back, looks, he's got plenty of time. He kind of backpedals a little bit. He fires over to his right and it is incomplete. Second and 10 with about a minute and 11 left. You got McCall in the gun. He's audibling. Drops back. Looks. Fires. Quick one across the middle. Number 15. Almost gets to the first down. It's going to be third and one, and they call a timeout there. Third and one. McCall waiting on the snap. Drops back. Fires. Cross middle. Easy first down and more. And it looks like he's going to get to right at midfield, and they're going to call another timeout. Grayson McCall. Waiting for the snap. Drops back. Looks. He's getting pressured a little bit. He fires. And and the receiver almost got that tip pass there. No big deal. Still 54 seconds, second and 10. McCall gets it. Drops back. Looks. Fires. And hits his receiver. And the receiver holds on to it third and four. They're going to elect to do a little hurry up here. 45 seconds left and the clock is ticking. They've got one timeout left. McCall's waiting on the play. Gets it. Gets a snap. Looks. Fires. And he threads the needle there. And the receiver is able to hold on despite being hit by multiple Oregon defenders. Grayson McCall runs up to the line, elects to spike the ball. It is second and 10, 32 seconds left. McCall on the gun, waiting on the snap. Drops back, looks, fires across the middle. Number four gets just short of the first down and they call their final timeout. It is third and one, 26 seconds left. Grayson McCall hands the ball off. Number seven gets across the first down, and it is going to be first down with just 24 seconds remaining. Grayson McCall under center, and he elects to spike it. They've got 17 seconds left, and they're electing to kick the field goal, and Oregon will call a timeout. I'm really puzzled by this because they have plenty of time to run a few plays to try to get into the end zone and seal it, but they elect to kick the field goal, and they get it, but there's a flag. What's the flag? Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Oh my God, this is incredible. It's going to be first and goal for them. And they elected to keep the points. What are they doing? Oregon has an opportunity to win this football game. Oregon gets a good return there. 10 seconds left, two timeouts. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Did NC State fumble the bag here? Gabriel in the gun, drops back to pass, looks. He fires his running back. His running back gets almost to midfield and there's five seconds left and they call a timeout. Gabriel in the shotgun, five seconds left. This is the game, Oregon's season is on the line. He drops back, he looks, he's got all day to throw. He's gonna chuck this one deep, it's in the air, and there's a flag, there's a flag. Surely this has gotta be on the offense here. There's gotta be a push off. Oh my God, this is the craziest thing I have ever seen in a game. What a turn of events. Oregon has an opportunity to win their first national championship here off of this field goal. There's a good hold. Kick is up. And it's good. Oregon wins. Oregon wins. NC State not deciding to take that penalty and electing to keep the points absolutely hurt them here. Oregon wins their first national title. Guys, what did you think about this ending and what do you think about the game? Drop your favorite team down in the comments and let me know. Is your team going to win the national championship? I hope you enjoyed the video and we will catch you in the next one.